So what I want you guys to think about, for one, if we're talking about flat feet, what we're going to discuss is just like your ankles are kind of pronated, they're kind of collapsed inwards. It's a little bit difficult for me to do this because my body doesn't tend to have, uh, I don't have a flatness in my feet. But what you'll normally find, what at least what I've found in terms of researching and uh, working with people myself, with clients, uh, is that most of the time people who have flat feet will have an external rotation of their femur and they will also have their pronation that comes along with that. I've also seen people that have a knee valgus coupled with a flat foot. That does also exist. Usually they end up having uh, external, uh, t externally rotated tibias. But for people who have their feet forward and externally rotate their tibias, this technique's going to be helpful. And even for people who have this problem of, of a knee valgus with a flat foot where you tend to externally rotate your tibias, this is going to be still helpful for you. This technique is going to actually help both of you. Um, both of those types ultimately. What I'm essentially going to aim to do is create either an engagement of my adductors and, my, uh, and an engagement or an engagement of my abductors via a transverse twist with a feedback mechanism. So if I, in theory, if I in theory rotate my body perfectly or close to perfect, then my leg every single time, let's say that I run or if I do a squat, my knee should land at about neutral in every single stride that I take. So if I take a step, and my knee collapses in, something up above didn't engage to pull that knee back into position. And most of the time, that lack of engagement for most people in our culture today is a lack of rotation. So what we're going to focus on today is trying to engage the anterior oblique slings and trying to engage the posterior oblique slings on the back side. If we get that engagement, now we're going to have the support structure for the knees, that, which in, then in turn will change the, the structuring of the foot positioning altogether. Okay? Now there's a few ways of going about this. Not everybody is going to have a, a deep intrinsic uh, internal control of the rotation. There's many facets that come into this. I have a 10-week course where I teach you how to do this, um, but it's extensive. There's a lot of details that need to be covered uh, to learn these types of things. But right now what I'm going to try and do is kind of give you guys somewhat of a, of, a, of a basic idea of what we're going to be looking for. And the way that we're going to do that is through a basic feedback mechanism. Now I want you guys to think about, I could tell you right now to rotate your body and most of you are going to be able to rotate. Some of you may, not be, may rotate with your hips and you might have a struggle of separating your ribcage from your pelvis. Many people have that. But if I tell you to rotate, you will be able to do that. For me, it's not important that a person can rotate. It's important to me, especially for a person that has a flat foot, who has an ankle pronation, uh, it's not important for me to have a person that just rotates, but have a person that can rotate under load. And I'll show you guys what I mean by that. If I rotate this way, there was no resistance on my trunk. So therefore, I'm not exercising my core while I'm doing that. How, but if I grab a band, if I grab a feedback mechanism, and I bring this across my chest, how I am right now, and I loop this all the way around, and I step in, now, and I go, of course it's going to look a little bit awkward, but now I have a feedback mechanism on my rotation. You guys can see that right now, I'm, getting, I'm involving that rotation, I'm rotating my trunk to the right, but now there's a feedback on there. I'm actually engaging my muscles. Okay, now how does this relate to your flat foot? I know many of you are probably like, I don't even know if this guy's going to talk about my flat foot, but I'll tell you this much right now. If I can rotate better this way, the odds are the positioning of my foot is going to follow the rotation that I'm doing in my upper body, and I'm going to have a better positioned foot as I take my steps through my life. Okay? So whether you believe it or not, there's a correlation between your le right lat, your left glute, your left uh, vastus lateralis. There are myofascial connections. I invite you guys to check out the anatomy train system because in anatomy trains, uh, Tom Myers explains these types of things where there's a connection that runs all the way down. You have your lateral lines which connect to all these things and guess what? If these muscles all engage the way that they're supposed to, that's going to help you create an arch on your foot. So if you're dealing with that pronation, if everything above engages, you will at some point, if you connect these muscles correctly, you will feel the arch of your foot begin to get bigger. You will feel the or increase. You'll feel the arch get be better without having to use any orthotics or anything like that. So this right now, believe it or not, is going to help correct your foot problems distally. This is the way that you're actually going to solve the root condition. Okay? So the way that we're going to do that, I'll show you guys once again so you're not too confused. Okay? I'll do this on my other side actually. So what I'm going to do, actually I've got a mic here. We'll, do, we'll keep it on the right side. Okay? What I'm going to do is actually bring my arm through this band right here. Okay? So I'm going to have it hanging on my shoulder. I'm going to take this, the, the band and I'm going to pull forward and create a nice little tug. Now it's essential that we maintain that tug, we keep that pressure and we just continue that pressure as we bring this all the way around to the back side. 
Okay, I'm gonna keep this on my rib cage, keep the pressure on the bones, and then I wrap this all the way across to my front side, and then I'm going to step through. So if I'm holding, if I'm wrapping this around my right shoulder and pulling everything forward, what I'm going to do is actually take a step, almost like if I'm putting my pants on, on the front side, and now we have a feedback mechanism on or for our thoracic rotation. So you guys can see that now my body is inclined to want to rotate this way. Now one thing that you can do once you've employed this, you can just go out for a walk. Go walk and feel how you're able to actually start engaging these systems through your gait cycle. And this will, believe it or not, this will modify the way that you walk. It's going to be a little bit taxing. But I'm also going to uh, warn you guys that if you do not keep intrinsic pressure of your core and your rib cage via the postural correction techniques that I show, like, let's say like in my, in my book, The Power of Posture, if you guys don't understand this intri intrinsic uh, in, uh, intra-abdominal pressure, the odds are this band may then begin to bend you laterally. So it's, it's rotational if you're functional. It's going to be lateral shifting if you're not functional. And many of you are going to be, are going to be dealing with this problem. So just think. TVA, rib cage, and now you have these feedback mechanisms that are going to help you essentially connect everything in your body and as a byproduct of this connectivity is going to help you with your, uh, with your ankle pronation, with your flat foot. Okay? Now if I take this a step further, I can then start doing functional patterns movements. Let's say a basic transverse twist and I'll be doing this in future videos. I'll be covering it and I've already covered this on, on other tutorials. Um, I can start doing transverse twists and now I can secure that I'm going to get more of a connection from the shoulder all the way through the hip as I rotate in this range of motion. Okay, so now you can do this with kettlebell swings, you can do this with pretty much essentially all your movements, you can go out for a run with these things on. I know they look kind of weird. But believe it or not, this is going to get you to start rotating better. It's going to help, again, put, send signals to the brain that will then make you move better over time. We need to be able to rotate. We need to be able to connect these structures if we really expect to want to function better in our lives. And for people that have a flat foot, try not to think so much about your flat foot. I'm going to show you guys something that you can do for your flat foot, and I could have shown that today. I'll save that for later on what you can do directly with your foot that's going to help you with this. And, uh, and I'll show you guys a way that we can combine this technique with another technique uh, later on. Uh, I hope you guys did find this to be informative and that it will be helpful.